there are three domains, and they are archaea, eukarya, and bacteria. So this is probably like the highest that you can go in the hierarchy of organisms. It's got three categories. The bacteria and the archaea both represent prokaryotes, and the eukarya, right, represents eukaryotes. That's where the name comes from. So keep in mind, right, there's three domains that classify every organism in life and yet two out of the three are prokaryotes. So we tend to kind of be eukaryote centric and think of that, oh, well, all the animals are, you know, they're all eukaryotes. So clearly there's more eukaryotes. It's like, well, that's not the case. And it's a common question the teachers ask because most people think that way. So remember, two thirds of all organisms are gonna be prokaryotes and they belong here. Prokaryote, prokaryote, eukaryote. So usually people are familiar with the eukaryote and the bacteria, but the archaea are kind of where people are like, okay, what are those? Uh, a couple of distinguishing characteristics of these guys are going to be uh, that they're extremophiles. So it's believed that the archaea were the, you know, the original organisms, or they're the, the oldest. And as such, they've evolved mechanisms to live in really, really extreme environments. So they can live in super hot temperatures, like in volcanoes, really cold temperatures, things that are really acidic, uh, things that have a really high salt concentration. So if you get a question on anything like that, you know, okay, automatically that's archaea. Uh, they're also going to be unicellular. Um, also, they share characteristics of both the eukarya and the bacteria. So uh, let's take a look at that. So for one, they have circular DNA. Uh, we already said that they were prokaryotic. And they have plasmids. Well, these features they share with bacteria. Also, they have histones. And they have introns. So these two features they share with eukarya. So that remember that the archaea kind of have features of both the eukarya and the bacteria, and that they're extremophiles. The last thing we'll talk about briefly is going to be cell wall. So every single one of these domains has organisms that contain a cell wall. The eukarya, for example, they have plants and fungi. Both of these have cell walls. Plants have cell walls made of cellulose, and fungi have cell walls made of chitin. Bacteria have cell walls. All bacteria cell walls are made of peptidoglycan. Okay, remember that the glyco anything refers to a carbohydrate and that the peptido should give away that this is protein component. So keep in mind that uh, right, bacterial cell walls all have peptidoglycan. This guy's super important. I mean, I've seen this on so many questions. You know that you're dealing with a bacteria, like cut and dry, if it has peptidoglycan in its cell walls. All bacteria have this. Plants have cellulose and chitin. The archaea are a little bit different in that their cell walls are made out of polysaccharide, but it's a polysaccharide that's different than uh, cellulose and chitin. Remember that these are both carbohydrates as well, and peptidoglycan has a carbohydrate component. And polysaccharide means that it's a carbohydrate, but it's different. So if you're going to remember anything about archaea, just remember that its cell walls are going to be different than the eukarya and the bacteria. And you can use cell walls to sort of distinguish between organisms that fall in the archaea group, the eukarya group, and the bacteria group.